Meet Arnold, and today, he's been visited not by Morpheus, but by sleep paralysis. Hey, Arnold, what's wrong? Oh, right, you can't move. Congrats, you're literally trapped in a waking nightmare. When you fall asleep, your brain goes, okay, body, don't move, it's sleep time. That's a safety feature so you don't jump off the balcony dreaming you're Superman. Normally, this body lock ends when you wake up. But sometimes, the brain wakes up before the body, and you find yourself stuck inside a real-life horror movie. Some people see a ghost in the room, others spot a monster hovering over their bed, and the luckiest ones hear whispers, footsteps, or breathing right behind them. No, it's not demons, not aliens, and definitely not your ex. It's just your brain glitching out, confused about whether you're asleep or awake. This happens on the border of REM sleep, the stage when dreams occur. REM is responsible for dreaming. So the pictures from your dreams overlap with reality. During paralysis, your imagination and fear centers, the amygdala and temporal lobe go wild. That's why the visions feel so vivid and terrifying. It's how legends about demons, witches, and ghosts were born. Your body is frozen and your chest feels like it's pinned down by a concrete slab. An episode usually lasts two to four minutes. But trust me, every second feels like an eternity. For some unlucky people, it can go up to 20 minutes. And yeah, it most often happens when you're lying on your back. So roll over, Arnie, quick. Why does it happen? Stress, gallons of coffee, and the fact that you fell asleep at 4 a.m., again, finishing online orders. That's what you get for thinking. Five hours of sleep is fine. Want a life hack? If you feel like you can't move, don't panic. Try focusing on one finger. No, not that finger. Though in your case, fair enough. Slowly move your toes or try breathing deeper. Your brain will realize your body's awake and turn off this creepy lock mode. Congrats, you're back in reality. Or are you? No. Whoops, we have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heartbeat, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone, you're only two meters deep. Hooray! There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones, they'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid mm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it. Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold. Arnold! Arnold! Wake up! Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. Bad weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What? You don't want to go to work. Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, 
They paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy. Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists. 370 days in bed. Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. Wait, are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine. Wake up, mm -hmm. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. It's a meteor cluster, Arnie. Look out, they can damage the shuttle. Quickly, get to the cargo hold. It's the only place that can protect you. By the way, we're in a closed, sealed, unventilated area, and there's not much oxygen left, so try to save it. Perhaps, for the first time in a long time, you're truly lucky, Arnold. But alas, with you, it's all in vain. Legumes contain a lot of sucrose, which isn't digested in our stomachs. The most harmful types of sucrose lead to bloating. They're called raffinose, stachyose, and verbiscose. When they enter your intestines, bacteria begin to produce huge amounts of gas. So now you have to breathe your own farts. Serves you right, you moron. Come on, it's not so bad, Arnie. Breathe your fart. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide can prevent mitochondrial cell damage. That makes it possible to prevent the development of diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, and even stroke. So breathe deeply, Arnold. It's actually healthy. Well, I really didn't think you'd make it this far, buddy, but you're doing great, really. Hey, buddy, I thought I'd do something nice. I saved a suit for you. Nice. Skip it a button. Uh, Careful, Arnold. Wind speeds on Mars can reach up to 100 meters a second. That's fast. Finally, some decent food. Open it quick. Let's see what's inside. Beans. Beans again. And again. And what's that there? What does it say? Hello, champion. I hope you have enough of this supply of healthy and very nutritious beans to wait until the next ship arrives. We'll send it when Mars and Earth next pass as close as possible to each other in about two years. Good luck. Ah! Hello, Arnold. Hey, are you writing nonsense on ChatGPT again? Arnold, because of you, AI will think humanity is stupider than it is. And that's dangerous. Wait, aren't you curious about what ChatGPT will answer to the idiotic nonsense you wrote? 
Even Elon Musk is afraid that AI could destroy humanity, and you're provoking it. Hmm, it looks like you ran out of toilet paper. Do you think this is the worst thing that could have happened? Arnold, was that sound from you? I told you, because of your stupidity, AI is going to destroy all of humanity. Or maybe not all. A nuclear explosion will destroy about 3,000 square kilometers. In total, there are about 362 million square kilometers suitable for destruction on Earth. To destroy everything, it would take around 128,000 warheads. This is 10 times more than there are in the world. Arnie, are you ready for a nuclear war? Good news, part of humanity will survive. The only question is, for how long? Canned food is a great choice. Yeah, that last can was one too many. But what do you think, Arnold? How long will you last without plants? In Svalbard, an international seed vault has been built. It contains more than 900,000 seeds, but can hold up to 2 billion. That's enough to revive all the flora of the Earth. Or at least it'll provide something to eat during long nuclear winter nights. You're pretty well set up, buddy. Chips, water, plants, canned food, medicine, even a computer. But it seems that you've forgotten the most important thing. One nuclear explosion on average will release 50 tons of dust into the atmosphere. The dust from the explosion of all nuclear weapons on Earth could cover 50 to 85 percent of the Earth's sky. But, but modern computer models promise that a nuclear winter will last no more than one month. So, you're saving innocent souls, are you? Be careful not to get yourself into trouble. Phew! Seems like you dodged a bullet there. Or not. I'm guessing you're gonna be stuck here for a while. And you'll have to survive without any food at all. Try to imagine your Angus Barbieri, a man who didn't eat anything for over a year. Shocking doctors. He lived a normal life, going to the toilet just once every 40 days. At the end of his fast, he weighed 180 pounds having lost 275 pounds. After 12 hours of fasting, you turn pale and weak. But a fat person feels better because they have fat tissue reserves. At this time, dizziness sets in. And an unpleasant smell comes from the mouth. Oh, Arnold, there's water here. See, Arnie, always look on the bright side of life. Fasting can serve good purposes. Gandhi fasted for three weeks in protest against the caste system in India. Christian Bale lost 66 pounds for his role in The Machinist. And medieval monks fasted to hear the voice of God. Like if you wouldn't last a single day. Unlike a person's mind, on the fourth day, the body accepts hunger as a given. During this time, a sharp loss of weight is observed, along with weakness. The body always needs food, so when it's not there, it has to use fat and muscle tissue. This releases ketones, which are extremely harmful to the body. Headaches and weakness develop, and in the worst cases, there's vomiting with gastric juice, confusion, and even death. After two weeks, you'll have a constant feeling that you're cold. Your consciousness often becomes cloudy, and you don't understand what you're doing. Oh, Arnie, here comes help. One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky.
you could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. And then the last remaining source of food will be...